Hey guys, and today I'm going to review Legends of Tomorrow Season 2. So the cliffhanger for the last season confirmed that we were going to be seeing the frickin' Justice Society of America on Legends of Tomorrow Season 2. And in this season, they were so awesome. All of them, they were so awesome. They were They were really awesome, and I really, really liked them. But I just think that most of them were very, very underused. And I would have loved to see a lot more of them. And maybe they could make like a present day JSA. And, and maybe like a show or maybe to appear on Legends of Tomorrow. Be like Jay Garrick, the Hawk, something like that. But anyways, I loved the JSA. And that of course led into Amaya joining the Legends. But I'll talk about Amaya later. I think this season with, you know, Sarah becoming the leader of the team and all, I thought that Rip fit better as a leader, but Sarah was definitely the better leader. But I still want Rip to be the leader instead of her because it's his ship. Um, I'll talk about Rip in a moment and how I didn't like his really like his storyline this season. Um, but let's get into the next member. Um... Again, Ray Palmer, a.k.a. The Atom. His suit looks great, and um, I think Brandon Rouse, Routh is a terrific actor. I think he's really funny, and I just he's just an awesome actor. And I really like him this season of Legends. Uh, Firestorm, uh, Jefferson Jackson and Martin Stein. I think, again, their dynamic is great. Even better in this season that, than it was in the first season, but... They come up with, like, any excuse possible um, for them not to fuse because it's expensive, and I really don't like that. Like, sometimes maybe Jack is like, oh, come on, let's go, Martin. And he's like, no, I'm going to stay on the ship just because they can't afford, like, at least make a better excuse than that. Or maybe I sacrifice some other stuff to make the budget bigger to make them. Okay, never mind, I just didn't like that. Sorry about that sound, by the way. Thank God this season, last season, Hawkman and Hawkgirl left. Thank God for that. They didn't appear once in this season. So the writers listened to the fans that said Hawkgirl and Hawkman sucked. So at least they left. And we traded those two members for two other members. Those being Nate Haywood, who was so funny. He was like, he is one of the, he works so great on the team. He's one of the members that works like best on the team. And the second member to join this season was Amaya Jiwe, who I really, really, really liked. Just because of her backstory with the JSA, I thought she was, like, a really good character this season. Later seasons, I don't know. But this season, she was really good. And, again, going back to um, uh, Nate Haywood, um, I think his suit as um, Citizen Steel... Or in this season, they just call him Steel, which is stupid. Why don't, why not just give him the name Citizen Steel? I mean, just calling him Steel, that's so stupid. When he's Citizen Steel in the comics, why not just call him Citizen Steel? But again, his suit, when he is uh, Steel, is really, really cool and awesome. Same with the effects. The effects when he is um, Citizen Steel look great. The CGI looks so amazing there. Um, I wanted to talk about Amaya again. Um, she was like a really, really good um, character this season. I loved her. I loved her backstory with the JSA. But I think um, in late... Okay, I'll talk about that when I get to my season 3 review. But I really liked Amaya this season. Mick Rory was terrible this season. He sucked so bad. Just the reason that he was so terrible in this season was because Snart wasn't there. Mick only works good... When Snart is there, so I mean, for the episodes where Snart was there, he was a good. He was a. I don't know why. Whenever Snart is there, he is a good character. But when Snart isn't there, he's just terrible and so annoying. Um, but I think when Snart is there, he works very well. Just because Snart works well on the team, and Snart works best when Mick is there too. So I don't know why, but he just works really well when Snart is there. But when Snart is not there. He is terrible. That's why I liked him in season one, but I hated him this season. Except for the episodes where Snart was there. Wow, the Legion of 
Doom. They were so, they were really, really, really good villains. I think the best villains that the Legends have had, I don't know, maybe Mullis, I don't know which I think is best, but I really like the Legion of Doom um, as villains, Damien Dark, uh, Reverse Flash, Malcolm Merlin, Captain Cold for a little bit, and McRory for like a tiny bit. But I think they were great characters, but the leader of the team is by far the best. The leader is, of course, Eobard Thawne. I don't know what did I just say. Eobard Thawne, the Reverse Flash. I think he was he could have had this whole season on his own without the other members, and it would have still the season would have still been as good as it was. Eobard Thawne was just a fantastic villain, and um, I kind of wanted him to return again, but I'll talk about his ending later. He was a great villain, great villain. Damien Dark worked so much better in this season than he did on Arrow because he was a terrible fit for Arrow. Arrow, but I'm glad the sacrifice for Arrow was made because if that sacrifice hadn't happened, we wouldn't have him on Legends. And on Legends, he's like really, really good. I love his tension between the um, tension between Malcolm and Damien Dark. Speaking of which, I think Malcolm was also a really great fit. I think he kind of needed to get out of his Arrow bubble, as I think he. He had been a bit too much on Arrow and should go on to some other shows, so I think this was really great. Again, Leonard Snart, Captain Cold, good to see him be a villain again. I'm glad he wasn't, like, a member of the team. Um, yeah, I'm glad he wasn't a member of the Legends and he was a villain. I really like that, seeing him being a villain again. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad Snart um, isn't really uh, a hero. Alright, now listen to this, okay? I know a lot of people love Evil Rip, and I think the guy's a good actor when he's like Evil Rip, but I so much prefer the good Rip to that point where it kind of annoyed me that he just kept being evil this season, and then when he killed Sarah and it was revealed that, again, like for the fifth time, she is alive and didn't die. But I really didn't like Evil Rip this season, not because I didn't like Evil Rip, I, that sentence made no sense. Um, it not, it wasn't that I didn't like that I don't like evil Rip. It was just that I prefer the good Rip, which was pretty much what made me not like his storyline this season. Oh my God! This part this was my favorite part of the season. The favorite part, my favorite part of this season by far, was the Reverse Flash Black Flash storyline. It was so so awesome. And when Black Flash killed Reverse Flash, I was screaming in my chair and jumping, and I was like, yes, yes, yes! I loved that part of the season. The Reverse Flash and Black Flash storyline, my favorite part of the season. And um, what made, and that was also what kind of made me rank the season so high on my Ranking the Seasons video. By the way, check it out if you haven't already. Um, yeah, because I loved that storyline. So that was my review of Legends of Tomorrow Season 2. What do you think of this season? Personally, I loved it. My favorite season of Legends of Tomorrow. Um, what do you think of it? What is your favorite season? And what did you think of the Evil, evil Rip storyline? And what did you think of the Black Flash Eobard Thawne storyline? Anyways, thank you so much, guys, for watching. And please leave your video ideas in the comments. I love taking ideas from you guys and incorporating them into videos. Uh, and be sure to check out my next video and some of my past videos on Legends of Tomorrow and the Arrowverse as a whole. Thank you so much for watching, and bye.